Live Golf and the PGA Tours feud is finally over after two years. Didn't think I'd be saying that when I woke up this morning. And I don't think this feud can just purely just die down without people retracting statements, retracting comments. Because let's be honest, this new entity, DP World Tour, Live Golf and the PGA Tour, unifying to grow the game of golf, well, hypocrisy doesn't quite cover it. Now I must state at this point, it's a memorandum, it's a statement. This isn't down in writing, it's definitely not official, but considering the commissioner of the PGA Tour has come out with these kinds of statements and almost praising Live Golf on its futuristic ideas in where the game of golf is actually growing, I think what I'm about to talk about definitely holds some kind of weight. I mean, the biggest argument for the PGA Tour and everyone that supported it against Liv, people hating the idea Liv, where the money's come from in terms of funding the Liv Tour itself. The expectation is that billions of dollars will come from the PIF into the new entity. Yet with this new agreement between the PGA Tour, DP World and Liv, is that PIF, the company that sourced all the money for Liv in the first place, funding the majority of this new venture. Which kind of means if you're a diehard hater of Live Golf in the past because of those reasons, well, essentially you hate the DP World Tour and the PGA Tour as well. And I'd love to hear your comments below because no one saw this coming. No one. Only this week or last week, it was announced the Ryder Cup players from Europe, if you were a member of the Live Tour, weren't allowed to play in this year's Ryder Cup. Not allowed to be a captain, not allowed to be a captain's pick. You're not allowed to be associated with the Ryder Cup whatsoever. However, going forward in 2023, due to this new announcement, Live Tour players will be able to reapply for a PJ Tour or DP World Tour membership. Meaning every player that went to the Live Tour last year, two years ago, got paid an extreme amount of money, have the exact same rights as all the PJ Tour and European Tour players going into 2023, but they made a tiny bit of money, but they made a tiny bit of money in that transitional period. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this matter. I've never openly been biased to one or the other. I'm all for golf at the end of the day. And to be honest, I don't really watch that much. But if you do watch a lot of golf, if you do watch DP World Tour, PJ Tour, Live Tour, to be perfectly honest, this new unity is only gonna give us more golf. Potential tournaments between the sides, because this is historic. This is essentially the PJ Tour going, can't beat them, join them. And considering the PJ Tour is a non-profitable organization, this new entity between the three groups will be a profitable organization. So it'd be very interesting what that actually means and who's gonna benefit from growing the game of golf. But I'm extremely excited to hear the statements, the press conferences over the next month or so, as there's been a lot of words said on both sides. And I don't think this feud can just purely just die down without people retracting statements, retracting comments. Because let's be honest, now you're all in the same boat with all the same privileges, all the same rights, all in the name of growing golf. I mean, let's be honest, over the last two years, that definitely hasn't been the same kind of rhetoric, has it? And again, I'm not a massive supporter on either side, but at the same time, it's been embarrassing over the last year or so, especially when it comes to some of the majors, the commentating, especially around live golf players. When let's be honest, all we want to watch is good golf and considering Brooks won the US PGA, the live golf players have been up in the leaderboard in the top 20, basically every major, and not just one or two of them, but let's be honest, quite a considerable amount of them. Hopefully this does mean that the official world golf ranking point system will actually be somewhat accurate rather than the live golf players not getting anything no matter what kind of scores they shoot. Hashtag shafted. I mean, if you're Brooks Kepka right now, you're laughing. You've just won a major. You've definitely cemented yourself as a world-class golfer considering he's now got five majors to his name. That is a very small list. Obviously got paid a bit of money to join Liv in the first place and now is able now to play PJ Tour events. However, considering every Liv Tour player said they wanted to play less golf, wanted to be able to spend more time at home and have that work-life balance, 
be interesting to see how many PJ Tour events that they do go to, do commit to. And if the PJ Tour events give you more world ranking points than a Live Tour event, for that exact same reason as winning a DP World Tour event compared to a PJ Tour event. Does this also mean a floodgate of PJ Tour players, European Tour players wanting to now play in Live Tour? Play for what was used to be easy money, as it was stated. One thing's for sure, I don't think they're gonna get the same kind of buy-in fee as some of the other players did two years ago. One thing I do hope from all of this is the Ryder Cup retracted their ruling, saying that any Live Tour player can't be associated with the Ryder Cup. I want Ian Poulter as a captain in the future. I want Sergio Garcia to be a captain in the future. Let's be honest, I want them to be there for the 2023 Ryder Cup, even if they're not in a playing role. Now everyone's on the same side and congratulating each other on their own accomplishments. I can't really see any reason why those kind of players can't be associated with the Ryder Cup. So guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts. No more lawsuits, no more litigations. Everyone's a happy family in the world of golf. And let's see where this goes in the future. If you like this video, you might like this one up here on the right hand side. Catch you guys later.